Farmers have been custodians of the landscape for thousands of years, and farming practices have shaped the rural countryside as we know it today. But farmers have had to move with the times, and some of these changes have had negative consequences for the environment. A new pilot program aims to bring farming and the environment back into sync, benefiting both. Over time, farmers have managed their habitats and encouraged biodiversity through traditional cultivation, such as small crop rotation, mixed farming, and by establishing field boundaries. Operating in a tight and uncertain economy, farmers have been under pressure to adopt government initiatives such as intensification. This sought to help farmers, but it led to an increased dependence on fertilizers and pesticides. And this was bad news for the environment. The REP scheme began to tackle some of these issues, but LAPD is going further, introducing environmentally friendly farming practices that will cut farmers' costs. I travelled to County Monaghan to meet Niall O'Connor of Monaghan County Council and farmer Frank Brady, who's participating in the programme. How are you? You're in pigs, are you? I'm a pig farmer, yes. Right. So a dying breed, would you believe? There's only three or four hundred pig farmers left in the country now. Right. It's amazing. Really? When I was really? a young fellow, everybody had a sow. Now yes. it is. It's it's all the way it's gone. Frank, I hear some pigs inside. Yeah, do you want to see them, Duncan? I'd love to. Hold on, we'll just get you some overalls. We don't want you to come back to Dublin stinking of pig manure. All right, now is that for my benefit or for the pigs? Oh, it's for the pigs. Frank has built a state-of-the-art shed for his sows, which reflects best current practice. Natural ventilation and sprayed roof insulation. So how many sows have you got in here? There's about 200 in here. Right, so what have you done in this building here? We put in uh, bulbs that will be 16 watt each rather than the 100, 100 watt bulbs and fluorescent bulbs that used to be here. Uh, we don't turn them on because we have all windows around the place unless we have to. We have no fans. So how much will you save on electricity then? On, we, on lighting? On lighting, we reckon about a thousand over the whole unit. A thousand euros a year? I asked Niall O'Connor what the Los Angeles Police Department had to do with farming in Monaghan. Duncan, the uh, acronym LAPD stands for Local Authority Prevention Demonstration Programme and it's a project that's funded uh, by the Environmental Protection Agency through the National Waste Prevention Programme, really trying to improve uh, sustainable resource use and promote prevention as the most desirable form of waste management. Uh, when we started, we worked with nine farms all together and when we started working with them, we didn't really know ourselves what we'd find. And I suppose the issues that have been highlighted uh, in terms of waste have been uh, hazardous waste and uh, trying to get hazardous waste off farms and trying to get it uh, treated and disposed of correctly. But also the whole issue of farm plastics as well is a big issue with farmers. Uh, in terms of energy management then, every farm has lighting, motors, drives that need to be um, kept uh, maintained and also try to get the most efficient ones on there. And also in terms of water management, you know, water, uh, farmers have been charged for water now, so there's an onus on them to try to conserve water. Right, so there's environmental benefits here, but there's also cost savings for farmers. Well, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, farming is a business, and any business in these economic times are trying to look at ways to reduce their, um, their costs in terms of uh, there may be investment required, but that investment will pay itself back. So these are sows, are they? Yeah, these are sows and their babies here, yeah. Right, so from an energy point of view, What's the most important issue here in this, with these small babies? Heat. Heat, okay, right. So where do they get the heat from? These heat pads. These pads here. These white pads here. Yeah, they're actually heated. They're actually using about 20 watts as against 250 watt bulbs that we used to use years ago. So less than 10% of than your 10%, energy yeah. by just changing from the... The, the watts to the heat to pads. This. Yeah. That's incredible. Now there's a cost factor for buying the heat pads, but they do last a lifetime. What about all the other farmers in Ireland? How do they know about what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, well, I suppose uh, one of the things that we've done is produced a booklet here, an information booklet on the case studies that we have developed here. Right, so, okay, so it's all the information. All the information, and we're looking at other ways of distributing nationally through the IFA and other organisations. Very good. So, Frank, you've done a lot so far. So what's next coming? Next thing is the water. We're hoping that we can get the rainwater back in that we'll be able to wash our piggeries with the rainwater and recirculate it, and that hopefully it'll save us on water charges. Great, Frank, and I must say thank you for everything. And I think a lot of what you're doing here, a lot of farmers around the country will be very interested. Hi. A total of 16 farmers are taking part in the LAPD pilot programme, and four of them are in County Longford. Eugene and Marcella Matthews carry out mixed farming, primarily dry stock to beef. Okay. Good morning. Nice to meet you. And you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Eugene. How are you're you? You're welcome. Yeah. 
Ina, here is the sixth generation the on the farm, aren't sixth you? Sixth generation on the farm here, really. Since when? Since 1848. Really? So, Marcella, how did you get involved now in the LAPD? It, it was actually Chagas who phoned us first and had said that Longford County Council was starting this programme and um, he, uh, the guy that we were dealing with in Chagas, knew that we were very much uh, involved in environmental things and that we were concerned about recycling and he thought that we were the, the perfect choice for this programme. Right, so what you're applying in your house now, you're starting to apply on the land, is it, on the farm? Yeah, correct, yeah. 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 It's yeah. just an extension, really, from the house, now it goes on to the farm. It's, right. yeah, yeah, you could say one is enhancing the other. Gary Brady is an environmental awareness officer with Longford County Council. He makes regular visits to the farm. So what do you measure out here, Gary, when you come out to a farm? Basically, Duncan, we measure the water, we measure the electricity, and we measure the waste that's generated on the farm. Right. So as you can see, um, what's around you, this would be typical of the type of waste. Meal bags, pallets, um, oil containers, um, scrap metal, uh, netting, twine, oil filters, the, the, the typical stuff that would be generated. Things. Yeah, All these things, exactly. How long is the programme up and running here in Longford and how successful is it? Well, the programme's been up and running just over a year and it's been very successful. Of the four farmers that we have in the project, one farmer was landfilling 90% of his waste and now he's gone completely the other direction. He's recycling 90% of his waste. Another farmer um, has moved from taking his meal in meal bags to having a bulk, bulk delivered and the bulk delivery has saved him about 300 kilos of waste plastic and has also a cost saving of about 2,000 euros. So you can see, Duncan, that there is huge savings being made once um, farmers can take this on board. And is this kind of reference back to a benchmark or anything? It or? is. We, we reference it to benchmarks as in um, kilowatt hours per um, kilogram of beef on beef farms or kilowatt hours per litre of milk on dairy farms. So we can reference it back for the farmers so the farmer knows exactly how much energy, waste and, and water that each animal is using on his farm. And you can check relative to other farms. Is that exactly. So, on these issues now of waste, water, energy, tell us about what you're doing with energy. You probably use a lot of energy on light. We would, especially during the winter months. Of yeah. course. And, and your electricity must be big, Eugene, is it generally? Is it, it can be in the winter time because a lot of the time we need to leave lights on in the sheds, you know. And one thing I will say about the uh, new lighting system is uh, there's much better light from it at less cost. Right. So is there anything you would like to do now in the future, having done all of what you've done so far? Well, we've been uh, looking at uh, having a wind turbine. Right, perhaps. your own wind turbine. Yes, yeah. to help with the powering the, the energy for the farm. Absolutely, and you've got some good high land around here. We have you? indeed, especially at the back. Location. It's extremely uh, favourable for that uh, type of turbine. So you could be totally self-sufficient with electrical energy. We'd well, love to be, actually. Like yes, to, yeah. and you could use it for lots of other things. You could even power an electric car at night time. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> or a tractor. <laughs> There's a whole world of sustainable alternatives for farmers to take advantage of, and programmes like LAPD are putting them in touch with this valuable knowledge. <laughs>